All right. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for joining us today. My name is Tavara Richard. I am the Information and Referral Intake Specialist here at the Center for Independent Living in Northwest Florida. You can reach our office by dialing 850-595-5566 for information referral resources or connect with one of our ILS specialists for certain DME, hearing impaired phones or other CIO services the assistive technology specialist for equipment to help compensate for certain impairments and promote independence, or our advocacy outreach coordinator who advocates for the civil and human rights of persons with disability. Everyone wants to live their lives as independently as possible, but we may need to reach out for a little help at times. Today, we have with us Ms. Deborah Carty, the district administrator for the Division of Blind Services, Pensacola District Office, and she's going to talk to us about the services her agency provides to assist the blind and visually impaired residents and their families in Escambia, Santa Rosa, Okaloosa, and Walton counties. Welcome, Ms. Carney. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm really, hello, everybody. I'm really excited to be here today to tell you about our program. Um, as she said, I'm Debbie Carty, the District Administrator for District 1. I do have a slide set I can show while I'm talking. So let me get that up there. Okay. And everybody should be seeing that now. Okay. So, all right. Okay, so District 1, um, we, we covered the first 10 counties in the Panhandle, all the way over to the Apalachicola River. Um, so it's a pretty large area. And because of that, we have two office locations. Uh, our main office is here in Pensacola, where I'm located. Um, we have two VR counselors. We have a rehab technician here um, and an employment placement specialist. And then we also have a satellite office in Panama City where the assistant district administrator Kendrick is located. We have one VR counselor there, a rehabilitation specialist counselor there, and a rehab tech as well. So we are working in our offices and we're open to the public. Um, appointments are preferred, but we won't turn anyone away if we do get a walk-in. So try and go to the next screen. Okay, and that's just a few of uh, the people from our district. Um, we had a little Christmas get together, um, just showing you the addresses of our location and the phone numbers. So, the Florida Division of Blind Services helps blind and visually impaired individuals achieve their goals and live their lives with as much independence as possible. So don't let the name fool you. Not everybody we serve is totally blind. We also serve people who are visually impaired or have low vision. But to be eligible for any of our services, there has to be a bilateral, bilateral visual impairment, or in other words, a condition or disease that affects your vision in both eyes. So our director is Mr. Robert Doyle. And um, we are under the Department of Education and Commissioner Richard Corcoran is over the Department of Education. So we also work closely with the Division of Vocational Rehab, Rehabilitation, that's our sister agency. Um, I know you, a lot of you are familiar with them and they have offices located directly next to us in both Pensacola and Panama City. So, just to give you an idea of our community service providers, our community rehabilitation programs, um, those are all of the, we call them, C we have acronyms for everything. So we call them CRPs. Um, so anytime, anywhere on the map, you see a letter uh, it represents a CRP. And district one is the entire uh, area there in peach colors. And H is our CRP, which is Independence for the Blind of West Florida. 
Um, they have a great website if you need to learn more about them. They're at ibwest.org. And we they provide a lot of our um, direct training services to our to our consumers. Okay. So um, the Blind Babies Program, we have a lot of programs to help and assist with a large variety of needs. So the Blind Babies Program provides community-based early intervention education for children from birth to five years old to promote early development with a special emphasis on vision skills to minimize development delays. And then the Children's Program serves children age five to 13 and supplements services already offered by the school system to foster the child's learning and ability to function independently. So Kathy Lloyd is the counselor over these two programs. She works with the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind for the Blind Babies and our community service provider, Independence for the Blind, um, to coordinate appropriate services based on each child's individualized plan and assess needs. So Kathy is also um, works with our independent living program. It helps adults and older blind and visually impaired live more independently in their homes and communities. Some core services provided are orientation and mobility, assistive technology training. Um, that includes screen reading software like JAWS. So I understand you have a more in-depth pre presentation lined up from our own AT expert, Donald Donald Rasavi, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, on 421. So I highly recommend that training um, and independent living skills training. It's all provided by our contracted service provider, IB West. So we have um, transition services. This program involves trans transitioning students from school to post-school activities through careful coordination with the schools, parents, and community partners, all with the final goal being to ensure that they can be an independent adult. The services are generally available to 14 to 24-year-old students in high school through college. Uh, the core services provided are pre-employment transition services, other also called pre-ETS and they, the, the, the big five under those are job like exploration counseling, work-based learning experiences, work-based readiness training, self-advocacy training, and counseling opportunities for enrollment and education programs. LaShondra Barnes is the main counselor for that caseload um, and Amanda Wilson also has some of those clients. Um, our most robust uh, program is the Vocational Rehabilitation Program. So the goal of VR is to assist an individual in achieving or maintaining an employment outcome that is consistent with his or her unique strengths, abilities, interests, all within informed client choice. Eligible individuals must have a visual, visual impairment in both eyes and require vocational rehabilitation services to obtain or maintain employment. So Lance, LaShondra, and Amanda all um, are C are D1 clients. They're all v VR counselors for District 1. Okay, so we also have employer services. DBS will assist employers in finding, hiring, working with, and making accommodations for persons with visual disability. We provide information about federal tax incentives, educate on available resources, and can even provide sensitivity training for staff. Um, also, not necessarily here, but we can also put people forward for the Bureau of Business Enterprise program um, that's run by the state office in Tallahassee and provides opportunities for legally blind clients of the vocational rehabilitation program to manage their own businesses. These blind entrepreneurs manage a wide variety of food service operations, including cafeterias, restaurants, coffee bars, vending locations, highway rest area vending sites, and catering. So these businesses can be found at federal, state, county, and private locations throughout Florida. And they provide everything a visually impaired person needs to get started running their own food service facility, um, including the training, 
equipment, inventory, and necessary funds to begin operations. So they pride themselves in allowing visually impaired entrepreneurs independence in their day-to-day -day operations, while at the same time providing continual support through professional business consultants and educational workshops. Um, all the training they provide, there is an, an extensive 16-week training program that takes place at the Rehabilitation Center for the, visually for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Um, it's located in Daytona Beach, Florida. They have um, a dormitory type facility there that's not open at the moment, but they are working on reopening it. Um, so it's they're still providing the training. So if someone is eligible to go, what, what they're doing is staying in a hotel nearby and they'll get take a shuttle back and forth to the rehabilitation center. So they have a beautiful campus, as you can see, where people who are blind can temporarily live um, while they learn new skills to lead productive, self-sufficient lives. The curriculum and resources support the client's progression to independence and full participation in the, com in the community, and including employment. So there's no cost to the individual for the training or the room and board, whether it's on their campus or in the hotel. Okay, so we also have um, the Braille and Talking Books Library, and it provides information and reading materials in Braille and recorded audio format to Florida residents who are unable to use standard print as a result of visual, physical, or reading disabilities. It is the largest library of its kind in the U.S. with a collection of more than 2.4 million items in Braille and audio format, and the library serves more than 31,000 Florida residents so there's a link on the website to apply for services using an online PDF form, or you can call our office for assistance. So we're also fortunate to have our own sub-regional talking book library at the West Florida Library on Spring Street in downtown Pensacola, where they have an entire bookshelf holding a selection of talking books on site near the front desk when you go in. So you can see what the talking book cartridges look like, and you also would receive player at no cost when you apply for the services. And they send you all these items through the mail too. Okay, so how do you refer someone to our services to our services? And how do you get someone started? So it's we have a real easy online application form that is very user friendly and accessible. Um, I'm going to try to show you online, but if you can see the screen too, behind you is just um, what the beginning of the application looks like. And it, it, it doesn't require too, too much. Let me try this. No, that's not working. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry, bear with me just a minute. I got to reshare my screen. Okay. I'm not sure if I, if I'm sharing that properly. I probably not. But what I'll t what I'll to do is just tell you. It asks all the basic information, um, and it's easy to use the tab key to get to each space. Um, it's going to ask what program you're pro you're interested in. Are you interested in working? And then your basic uh, name and contact information. And then um, the most important piece, though, is if you have the, your medical information available. So if you've been recently been to the eye doctor, it's going to be important to say that you have um, done that so that you can give a release of information in order for us to get your eye report from your doctor. Um, that's going to save you a lot of time and get you in services faster if, or get whoever is applying into services as fast as possible. 
So I will go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, and moving on, just some basic facts about blindness and visual impairment. It is rare for someone to be completely blind. Their ability to see might exist anywhere along a continuum from partially sighted to totally blind. Deborah, Additionally, the amount. Yes. Um, we can't see your PowerPoint. Okay, okay. Let me try one more thing. Can you see any of the screens? No. Okay. Okay. And now that should be. Yes, now we can see it. Okay, great. Thank you for letting me know. And yes, um, so it is rare for someone to be completely blind. Um, and the amount of usable sight varies from person to person, and visual acuity may change under different lighting conditions. In fact, only about 10 to 15% of people who are blind see nothing at all. So um, vision is measured in terms of how much can be seen. That's the peripheral field, field of vision and how clearly it can be seen. That is known as visual acuity. Legal blindness mean, means having between zero and 10% of normal visual acuity in both eyes. So 20 over 200 vision or less and or 20% or less of normal peripheral vision in both eyes. So in other words, the, the person while wearing glasses can see less at 20 feet than a person with normal vision can see at 200 feet. Low vision or partially sighted means having visual acuity uh, or a field of vision that is less than normal or having a visual limitation in one eye. You might walk by someone who is visually impaired and not even know it. Fewer than 2% of visually impaired people use a white cane to navigate. The rest use guide dogs or nothing at all. And surprisingly, 80% of visual vision problems worldwide could be avoided or even cured with prompt medical care and regular eye examinations. In particular, a leading cause of blindness among adults over 50 is cataracts, which are treatable with surgery, as we all know. Um, that's one of the biggest eye medical services we can provide within our vocational rehabilitation program. And uh, it, is a, it is very rewarding to see people um, be completely re rehabilitated and get their eyesight back. A major challenge facing people who are blind and visually impaired is the large amount of printed material they encounter on a daily basis. So there's a lot of um, four simple options to make written material available to anyone that has visual impairments. And it depends on their personal choice and their visual acuity. So written materials can be re recorded onto audio cassettes. Um, regular print can be converted into large print by using a large, larger font size on the computer screen or using a magnification technology like um, CCT. Um, we also have handheld magnifiers that can go over the print and uh, voice, synth voice synthesizers um, can read out the print. Um, written materials can be transcribed into Braille as well. So tips for interacting with someone who's blind or visually impaired. Um, good, always good to announce your presence and who you are. And you don't have to shout, you can just use a normal tone of voice. When you leave the person's presence, you always say so. Um, offer assistance in filling out forms and be prepared if requested to read out loud any printed information. Um, keep in mind that people with visual impairments can fill out their own forms and sign their own names um, especially if the appropriate space is indicated to them. If you're ever in doubt, just ask. Ask what kind of assistance they might need, and they will tell you. It's um, not necessary to speak loudly when you're talking to them. You shouldn't stop talking when you see a blind person approaching, 
um, because they could re be relying on the sound of your voice for orientation. And when giving directions, be sure to use descriptive words like straight, forward, to the left. Be specific and avoid using vague terms like over there. Um, don't hesitate or feel embarrassed to use the word see or look when you speak to a blind person because they use those words too. And if you're walking with an individual who's blind, let them take your arm from behind just above the elbow and just walk along in a relaxed manner. In this position, the person can usually follow the motion of your body. And if you take their arm, the person doesn't have the advantage of following your movements. So be sure to tell them about, you know, any obstacles you're going to encounter like stairs or anything else in their path. Um, if there's others in the room when you enter, the blind person may not be aware of this, so it's always good to introduce each person by name and indicate where he or she is in the room rela relative to where the blind person is located. So guide dogs are working animals. Um, there's a special relationship between the person who's blind and their dog. It can be hazardous for the visually impaired person if their dog is distracted when working. So never touch or pet a guide dog without obtaining permission first. You can always tell the difference between a guide dog and just a companion dog from the type of harness they're wearing. Um, as you can see from these photos here, the, the harness has kind of a triangular um, looks like something you'd see on a, on a horse. Um, so that way you can tell that they're working when they have that harness on. Um, we have, we do have um, a guide dog agency here in Florida and it's called the Southeastern Guide Dogs and that they're located down in South, South Florida and they do a lot of the training there and they have a beautiful campus. I recommend going on their website and having a look around if you're ever curious about how that works. Um, also, whenever there's a pedestrian crossing or attempting to cross a public street, using a guide dog or carrying a white cane, um, you have to, if, you have to, um, if you're driving, you have to stop. Every, every vehicle approaching that intersection um, is expected to stop. And if you don't, then they're guilty of a moving violation. You could get a ticket. So be careful out there and always keep an eye out for a white cane. Um, it could be a white cane with a red tip. Um, we celebrate National White Cane Safety Day on October 15th. And we usually have some kind of special activity or, or outreach event and observance. So, you know, stay tuned. Um, we'll, we'll make sure to email any information about that out. And we, that is our phone numbers. If anybody has any questions, um, anything, anyone not even sure if they're eligible for services, just reach out and call us and we'll be glad to help you and walk you through it. We'd rather someone, if they aren't sure they're eligible, we'd rather someone call us and we can look at your eye medical report. We can, you know, listen to a description of, of what your eyesight is like and we'd be happy to help you go from there. Um, and the same goes for just filling out an application, even if you're in doubt. Go ahead and fill one out and, you know, someone will be calling you back and giving you more information and what kind of assistance we provide. So I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions. Um, Deborah, I did have a question um, submitted about the, about the library. Um, the library, does it lend, um, do lending to other counties? Um, say we needed something that the, the library here in Pensacola didn't have. Um, can we get it from the main, the, the large library? So, yes, if the, um, the local library here on Spring Street, they only cover Escambia and Santa Rosa counties. So anybody in the other, in any other outlying counties can use the library on the Orlando campus and they will provide everything through the mail. Okay, they have a good. large, yeah, a huge catalog of um, books. Well, that is good information to know. Um, the other question that was submitted said, uh, was asking about the business, uh, the BBE program. 
Um, is it mm -hmm. only food service businesses or does it allow, um, will they um, consult and assist for other types of businesses that they may want, a person might want to start? Okay, so yes, there's kind of two parts under that program. So the um, Business Bureau of Business Enterprise, or they call it BBE, that is strictly food service. And that's the one where they are, are set up at a, a rest area or, you know, a vending site that's on federal property or state property. There's also, it's also possible if someone is an entrepreneur and they can submit their business plan and idea to their counselor and it'll go through a review process that all the way up at the state and they could be um, provided a certain amount of means, financial means in order to start their own business if they deem it viable and something that they can do and become self-sufficient with. Okay, that's good information to know as well. And and again, somebody asked, what day was the White Cane Day? And it is October 15th every year. So um, there'll be something coming out. I'm, I will make sure I send out an announcement to um, Savannah or, or our contacts and let you know like this. Last year, they did a great little virtual program and gave some they had a lot of different guest speakers and it, and it was a lot of fun it was something you could log on we use teams and you could just log on and and participate and watch and it was educational and fun at the same time okay that's wonderful that that covers all of the uh questions that we have um okay. you had some that came in before um a presentation okay Okay. How long can someone stay on your program? So it depends on which program and it depends on a lot of different factors. So, I mean, there is no set time. It's, it's how that fast that person progresses and, and then how long it takes them to be ready uh, to get employment if that is the goal. Um, it, it, it again, again, it could be years, like we have some people who've moved from blind babies to the children's program and into transition um, and all the way through. Um, and then once they are successfully employed for three months, we like to call them a successful closure and we'll close them, but they're not um, prevented from applying for services later down the road if they ever need it again. We're still here for them and we can help them. Okay. And I know you said there was the online application can that person apply themselves or have to be referred by a case manager or anything like that? And they can apply themselves. Okay. We have, um, an, or if they want help and the case manager, you know, is there and willing, they, the case manager can do it either way. We're so flexible. Okay. And we try to make it as easy as possible. <laughs> okay. And how do you inform the public or get the word out about Division of Buying Services and what services you provide? Yes, so that's what we are working on. We try to do as much outreach now that, um, you know, a lot of the lockdown restrictions are over. We want to get back out in the community. Um, we have these information packets. So we, we link contacts. We're available to do presentations if anybody invites us. And that's why I appreciate your invitation to do this one today. And, um, you know, we're available to, to give any kind of in-service training. Um, anybody is open and ready to have us because we want to get the word out there. We don't have a lot of funding for advertisement. So a lot of it is either word of mouth or us um, pounding the pavement and going out to organizations. Uh, let's see. I know you brought up when you showed those guard, uh, guide dogs. Do you guys actually train an individual to use the guide dogs or you have to go down to the Southeastern guide dog? And that is a good question. No, we don't provide the training here. Um, what they do is when they're matched, when someone is matched with the dog, um, that person will travel to wherever they're getting the dog from. And if it's Southeastern, they'll travel to there and stay on their campus. Um, I think it's a four week training. So it's a training with the dog and for the person as well, um, because it takes a lot of work to get them together and to understand what is needed to continue that training so that the dog um, doesn't become a pet. It, right. it, it, yeah, there's a lot of discipline involved. Okay, and one more. 
Um, you guys, the Division of Life Services, assist people with applying for Social Security disability. Say say that again. Do we assist them with applying for Social Security disability? Okay. Um, we don't apply for them, but we have facilities here where they can if they need if they don't have internet access or they need assistance. Um, and then as far as if they're already receiving any kind of disability benefits, um, we can provide consultation with an outside source who can look at what they're receiving and kind of give them some guidance on what kind of hourly wage or monthly income would be good for them to allow them to, to work, but not lose their benefits. So we can provide that for them. So people, you know, that's a lot of people's number one worry. Well, I don't want to lose my benefits, um, but we can work around that and we work with you and we will help you whatever you want to do. Okay. And I know you provided the um, numbers for your office in Panama City. Is there an 800 number that someone can call? Oh, that is a very good question. Let me see. I know we have one on our website. Okay. Um, get that for you. I can pull that up. And the one time you're really looking for it is when you can't find it. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm, I don't use it very often, so I don't have let's see. inquire. Okay, so. I'm not seeing an 800 number. I am seeing just a main number for the state office in Tallahassee. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, here it is. It's 800-342-1828. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all the questions that I had that came in. Are there any other questions from the participants that are on right now? Um, let me check our box. Uh, nope, they have all been taken care of. So Deborah, we're gonna go ahead and, and, and end our presentation. And we are so thankful that, that you attended today and, and, and told us all about the Division of Blind Services. And thank you to our participants for attending today. And if you need any further information, please reach out to Deborah at Division of Blind Services or to the, us here at the CIL uh, uh, at 3600 North Pace Boulevard. And our phone number is 850-595-5566. Thank you, Tavara. You did a great job. Everybody have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.